The concept of the soul, Arabic ruh, is essential to both Islam and Christianity. The nature of the soul and our subjective consciousness has eluded philosophers for thousands of years and the debate is far from over. I do, however, think that we should not be satisfied with anything less than a scientifically testable theory that can explain how subjective consciousness works. I have not found among all the hypotheses hitherto anyone that I hold more dear than or value so much than that of Giulio Tononi, which, having reflected upon it with great and prolonged diligence, I now find to be the most promising hypothesis yet of becoming the scientifically testable theory that we have so long waited for. It is therefore my intention to read his excellent book, Phi, A Voyage from the Brain to the Soul, chapter by chapter. I hope you will have patience with my less than perfect pronunciations and my ill use of the English language. Please enjoy the book and may God be with us. Phi, A Voyage from the Brain to the Soul by Giulio Tononi Preface Every night when we fall into dreamless sleep, consciousness fades. With it fades everyone's private universe, people and objects, colors and sounds, pleasures and pains, thoughts and feelings, even our own selves dissolve until we awake or until we dream. What is consciousness? And what does it mean? How is it related to the world around us? What is it made of and how is it generated inside the brain? Can science shed some light on it? Perhaps, but consciousness cannot just rest inside the shroud of science. Because consciousness is more than an object of science, it is its subject too. What follows is a story where an old scientist Galileo goes through a journey in search of consciousness. In his time Galileo removed the observer from nature and opened the way for the objectivity of science. Perhaps this is why Galileo is engaged to return the observer to nature, to make subjectivity a part of science, or perhaps because Galileo was a master of thought experiments, of which this book makes much use. During his journey, Galileo meets people from his and other times, learns many lessons, thinks many thoughts, and sometimes wonders too whether he is awake or dreaming. But each chapter makes some kind of statement, building on the previous ones, and Galileo's understanding grows. So in the first part of the book, he learns the facts of consciousness and the brain, why certain parts of the brain are important but not others, or why consciousness fades with sleep. In the second part, he sees how these facts can be unified and understood through a scientific theory of consciousness, a theory that links consciousness to phi, the symbol of integrated information that gives the book its title. And finally, in the third part of the book, he realizes some of the theory's implications and sees that they concern us all, because consciousness is everything we have and everything we are. Each experience, Galileo realizes, is a unique shape made of integrated information, a shape that is maximally irreducible, the shape of understanding. And it is the only shape that's really real, the most real thing there is. The reader can judge whether the old man's musings make any sense at all. The notes at the end of each chapter attempt to clarify some ingredients of the main text and list credits when they could be identified. Some pictures and quotes were liberally altered. Those interested in a scientific exposition of a 
theory similar to the one presented in the main text can consult Consciousness as Integrated Information, Biological Bulletin 2008, and references therein. Several thoughts, images, and citations have appeared in previous work. It would seem that some people cannot help but write the same story all their life.